Hey up and welcome back and first of all an apology that there wasn't a video last week. Last week Mrs Wheeler took it upon herself to take a tumble while out walking Eddie and uh, busted her ankle basically so I've had to take on an enhanced domestic role as I'm sure you can imagine. Anyway it amounts to uh, a bad sprain so it could have been worse. The other reason is, uh, in spite of the fact that our uh, European friends are basking in unprecedented high temperatures here in the United Kingdom, it's been absolutely throwing it down wet and windy for the last fortnight and there is no end in sight. So it makes bike reviews and ride outs and vlogs and all the rest of it on two wheels a bit impractical. Anyway, on with today's subject matter. So, we all know, or at least should know, that in the last five years or so, the Royal Enfield brand has raised its global profile significantly, thanks to the production of a succession of retro-inspired motorcycles, constructed using modern assembly processes and with modern materials providing the look of a classic British motorcycle, together with the reliability associated with 21st century automotive engineering. Couple that with the best in British design standards and a highly accessible price point, and it's not hard to see why names like Interceptor, Continental GT, Meteor, Classic, Hunter and Himalayan have enjoyed so much success. But which of these is the best? In 2023, is there one particular model from the Royal Enfield stable? We can point to as having so much all-round appeal that it can be said to define the brand. Now, as some of you will already know, I have either owned, and still own, or ridden all of the 2023 Royal Enfields, with the exception of the standard Himalayan, although my experience as a Scram 411 owner has given me no small amount of insight into the Himalayan concept. So it's in the light of that recent experience, combined with the best part of 40 years of motorcycling on many different machines, that I'll seek here to explore the 2023 Royal Enfield range on a comparative footing and try to arrive at some coherent thoughts about which of them is the most emblematic of both the brand and the modern classic genre more generally. So then, let's begin with the oldest engine of the bunch and take a look at the Himalayan Scram 411. Now emerging as a scrambler variant of the established standard Himalayan adventure bike, the Scram 411 sports modern scrambler styling, updated instrumentation, including turn-by-turn -turn navigation, and represents a highly customizable platform, which includes luggage options and all of this whilst retaining the bomb-proof, tried-and-tested 24-brake horsepower single-cylinder air-cooled engine. Now, the Scram is available in a number of attractive colourways, and uh, it sports spoked, though tubed wheels carrying 50-50 on off-road tyres, that give the bike the overall impression of being a well stylized go go-anywhere proposition as indeed it will with that 19 inch front wheel and preload adjustable rear suspension. It handles well on both tarmac and the rough stuff and its modest weight and dimensions make it a very versatile performer for riders of all ages, shapes and sizes. Coming in at just over £4,000 in the UK, the Scram is affordable, stylish and very practical. 
and I found that this bike will do just about everything you will want it to on a day to day basis. And whereas the engine has limited power and lacks some refinement, if ridden with that in mind it delivers smiles by the shovelful. So staying with single cylinder engines, let's move on to the 350cc J series engine and the three models which currently sport this unit. First out of the starting blocks then was the Meteor 350, a small to medium sized cruiser inspired design with forward foot controls and that laid back riding position. An all day comfortable ride capable of returning 100 miles per gallon in the right hands. The relatively new 20 brake horsepower air cooled single cylinder unit has bags of character and just enough power and torque to give a rewarding riding experience for those who love the cruiser style. But Having test ridden this bike, I would say that you have to be a cruiser fan because that's pretty much where the logic ends when you take into account the later iterations of the Classic 350 Reborn and Hunter 350. However, a cruiser at a sniff under £4,000 is not to be sneezed at. See what I did there? Now, to my mind, the Classic 350 is a jewel of a motorcycle, and in my opinion, Royal Enfield's best looking machine to date. The retro design is impeccable, and it oozes perfect proportions and faithfully reproduced classic lines, and its overall presentation is to my mind far better matched to the J-Series engine than is the Meteor. There are a number of colour options, including two Crow models, three Halcyon models and two military inspired signal options and others. Now I am a little biased of course as I own a Halcyon Green Classic and I love it to bits. And uh, the Dispatch Rider style canvas panniers I've added really set the bike off. If you can live with the performance characteristics of this super smooth yet character laden single cylinder engine and are a lover of the modern classic style then look no further than the classic 350. Riding this bike puts a big cheesy grin on your face as should the price at an unbelievably reasonable £4,000 or thereabouts in the UK. All of which leads us on to the Hunter 350 which takes the J-Series engine into completely different territory. Whilst performance characteristics are broadly similar to the other two bikes, its shorter wheelbase and smaller 17 inch wheels make for a far more nimble and lively riding experience. There is also a significant weight saving over the Meteor and Classic which manifests itself in certain scenarios where manoeuvrability is the order of the day, but does not make for noticeably increased speed or acceleration qualities. That said, it is those improved handling characteristics and reduced weight which will make this little bike a consummate commuter. Now, when I tested the uh, Hunter, I put it through its paces in a, a busy city centre and uh, there I found that I could safely and confidently execute a number of time saving manoeuvres with the minimum of fuss and without incurring the ire of other road users. This bike still retains the stylish retro influences so loved by Royal Enfield fans but it's presented in a slightly more chic design package which is bound to appeal to younger riders. At typically £3,500 or thereabouts the Hunter is ridiculously cheap and if your bag is a commuter motorcycle which can also fulfil recreational riding expectations all with an affordable capital outlay and cheap running costs then look no further. So then, to sum up the new 350 range, there is pretty much something there for everyone, from the newly qualified A2 license holder to the seasoned rider. 
If I were to touch upon one negative, it would be the onerous first 300 miles of running in, which can seem a real chore at times. However, beyond that point, these engines open up massively and continue to mature and season like fine wine and go on to tickle many a palate. So let's conclude with the 650cc parallel twin range, a now well established and reliable engine which has justly earned its many plaudits over the last five or more years. A 47 brake horsepower air cooled unit capable of over 100 miles per hour, yet frugal enough to return 70 plus miles per gallon in the right hands. An engine whose bomb proof reputation is attributable in no small measure to its over engineered qualities. Qualities which allow it to be safely hiked to 850cc of capacity with the readily available upgrade kits. Qualities which make small wonder of the rumours abounding of a 750cc Royal Enfield before too long. Perhaps they always had this in mind during the development of the 650. Currently though we have three models to choose from, Interceptor, Continental GT and Super Meteor. Now I own an Interceptor myself and uh, have extensively tested both the Continental and the Super Meteor. Now the first concept platform for Royal Enfield 650 Twin was the Continental GT as a cafe racer styled modern classic to give expression to their new engine and it was during the development phase that the decision was made to add a more roadster styled option in the form of the Interceptor. A decision the wisdom of which has been borne out by successive years of stratospheric sales figures, the likes of which Triumph could but dream. All three of the 650s have bags of style and cachet combined with plenty of real world power, delivered with great personality and character. All three largely come in at less than £7,000, and all three can justifiably consider themselves modern classic motorcycles nostalgically celebrating the lost decades of post-war British motorcycling. The Interceptor and Continental are truly great bikes and are modern classics in the very purest meaning of the term. They come in a variety of colourways, including chrome options, which I think show these models off at their very best. Both these bikes will, I believe, come to define an era. The era of the affordable modern classic. An era when Royal Enfield came along and gave Triumph the finger, showing us that a beautifully designed motorcycle, which is both practical and reliable, can be made available at a price which captures the imagination of a community which would otherwise be marginalised out of the market by the likes of Triumph and Norton. The Continental comes in with a 12.5 litre fuel tank, which is slightly less usable than the Interceptor's 13.7 litres. The Continental's rear sets and dropped clip-ons look every bit the cafe racer and will appeal to many for that reason alone. However, I found that uh, after about 20 minutes the riding position was extremely uncomfortable and the thought of touring on this bike would fill me with dread. Others will get on just fine. When it comes to the Interceptor 650 though, I believe it to be the finest modern classic motorcycle currently available. In taking such a position, I have of course due regard to what you get and for what you pay. Its styling is so retro faithful it will swell your nostalgic heart. Its performance and handling will deliver endless thrills and smiles without breaking the bank or breaking your bones. Its rock solid construction and proven reliability will inspire you with confidence and its highly customizable design will allow you to indulge your creative instincts. 
Don your open face helmet, goggles and retro jacket and ride yourself back to 1960s England in perfect style. Stick on some dedicated luggage and tour in comfort to your heart's content through both rural and urban landscapes and be sure of admiring glances along the way. Now whilst it's only tank shape and riding position that basically separate the Continental and the Interceptor, the Super Meteor represents a more substantial evolution into the midweight cruiser category, where pretty much only the engine itself shares the DNA of the other two stablemates. The fit and finish of the new Super Meteor can be seen to be of a more premium nature than the earlier Interceptors and Continentals, although the later Interceptors feature some of these upgraded parts. Now I've twice test ridden the Super Meteor now and I never fail to be impressed by what it offers and what it represents. I'm not by nature a cruiser enthusiast, but there is something about this bike which speaks to your soul. It has to my mind a perfect balance between performance, handling and comfort. It does not excel in any one category, except perhaps value for money, but it certainly performs admirably across the piece. It looks as good as any cruiser will look and does its British design team proud. If lounge riding around the lanes as your local self-proclaimed easy rider is your thing, then this is the bike for you. I believe it is peerless in its class and will go down as one of the greats. So in conclusion then, to my mind the best of the bunch is still that glorious Interceptor 650. Whilst all the other Enfields have individual strengths, some of which exceed those of the Interceptor, it is the Interceptor itself which is the most complete and coherent modern classic of our times. In an age when many modern classics have failed on their own terms, the Interceptor has signally outstripped its original brief. Far from being just a 60s tribute act, it is a motorcycling legend in its own right. So if you'd like to explore any of these bikes in greater detail, I've reviewed them all in detail individually, please go back and have a look at those videos. In the meantime, and until the next time, ride safe, be kind, and I'll catch you soon. Toodle pip!